Tonight is special because whenever we can bring a new fingerprint into this community, I think it's a blessing. It's almost like Christmas every month. And when Kevin O'Keefe came to the gallery and spoke with one of our staff and they passed on his work, immediately I saw him and I thought, boy, this is powerful work. And the more I got to learn about him being from Chicago and a emerging artist that's also very humble and willing to work hard and put his work out here, even though in his market he can sell it for more. He's willing to do what he has to do to build an infrastructure of infrastructure of collectors so that his work can grace the beautiful homes of many of your collections. So tonight is special. For those of you who haven't been to Gallery Gishard before, education is critical and important and the artist, artist talks are a pivotal role. So without further ado, let's give a round, warm welcome and applause for Kevin O'Keefe. I'm from Chicago. My early influences were into music. I played trumpet when I was in grade school. And then throughout high school, I'm open later until hip hop while getting into like graffiti, airbrushing. Um, after getting arrested and learned that my parents didn't like that too much, and, okay, I said I wanted to learn how to do my art, something full-time where I'm not getting chased around. So um, I graduated from high school, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and I worked, I went to Morris Brown College, I worked in as a technician for a few years. Um, after doing that, I always felt like there was a void within it, I always would draw, paint on the side, but it was more of a hobby. Once people came to my house, they would see some of the work and they would say it was good. My mother would say that it was good, but you know, it was like the little kids, you know, you don't believe like your family, because they're all going to say, you know, you're great, you're the best. Um, but my mother, she said that art was my call. The process with this body of work here, the heavy and the hostile effect with the pigment, can you talk about what, how that process works, okay. what mediums, how your technique is. Okay, well I create all art with the knowledge that when you lay a color over another, it creates a totally separate color that you can't get just by mixing two colors together. Um, it's a process where it basically starts, the name of the show is called Inner Visions into Outer Realities. So it's everything that I think of in my head, and we all know that art is just it's a materialization of thought. And that was a spirit form of expression. So whatever you can create in your head, clearly you can manifest into a solid reality. I have the drawings up here, not that I necessarily show too many drawings, just to show you the process of what it takes. It starts with a simple sketch, then I might take that onto a canvas or a panel or a wood panel, and then I would lay different layers of paint until something that I see that catches me. You know, and then once I see a certain color, then I know that how I view it is I'm not necessarily responsible for the work. It's like I'm really a radio and I'm transmitting a frequency out. And that frequency is coming from God. So when you look at work, I look at a lot of times the same way you do. Like when I step back the next day, I'm looking like, okay, how did I do that? Because I can't recreate the same painting twice. I try for people, but it just has to happen. I think when art just happens, that's when you connect with something more divine than yourself. You have drawings going down the stairs, and those drawings are really nice. What inspires you and um at what point in time did you start doing your drawings? All right. Drawings, well, art for a lot of people is just therapy. I have a lot of issues, so it is my therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the sketches, like I said, inner visions are something that you just might have a thought, okay, a person with a head shape like this, okay, let me sketch it out. When we start working out on my paper, okay, that looks good. But a lot of sketches you may see, I might have five other sketches that look the same, but something might just be a little different. But the one that you see might be the one I like the most. So what inspires them always is life, or either the next painting that I plan on doing, or the next series. And I have to put it on paper to really see, because you might have some thought in your head, but you put it on paper like, that's not right, so something doesn't look right about his arm or his head. So it's always I'm working out something on paper. The sketches are really, out, they are just sketches, they're not really drawings so where I'm trying to perfect each line is just trying to iron out certain problems before I go to paint them. Yes? Why 
Yeah, the meaning behind that is we don't see clearly with our own eyes. You know, when you look into the eyes of God, you start seeing things from a greater perspective. We're seeing things from this narrow, well, it's a tunnel vision almost. We, you know, when you have a greater view, like you might not understand, like at least personally, I don't believe that I understand things until after the fact. Like, okay, now I see why I'm here, or why I didn't sell these paints so I can be here in front of you all. So the eyes closed is basically meant that we don't see clearly with our own two eyes. You don't see clearly when you look at the eyes of God. Yes. something that comes naturally to you or were you ever taught to sketch? Like I said, I never had any formal training. So it had to come, it's, it's, it's all natural. I think even if you do go to school, the ability doesn't come from you going to school. They just teach you more techniques and things to develop you. Um, so everything that you see, the drawings, a lot of people like drawings because they're pure. You know, it's the artist's own imagination of the papers and not, it's, it's no cover up. And another artist said, you know, it's good you can recognize a good or bad drawing in two seconds. You know, so there's no way to play around with it. I like drawings. They're the raw essence of an artist. When do you feel your message is that you're, you're supposed to bring? Mm -hmm. Well, I think with so much self-hate right now that we deal with, with all the violence against our own, that we're beautiful. And I think if we get back to loving ourselves and seeing our inner beauty, then it will change everything around us right now. I think we just need to get back to loving ourselves. So when you see me paint a lot of people from the African culture, that's my people. I paint it from a point of love. I think you have to have that love to be able to transmit it onto canvas and to have something of beauty in front of you. You have to have a love for your own people. Yes. You have at least four different Yes. Did you cultivate all of those styles at the same time? Was there some, some what, were they se sequential in terms of their development? Or did you just wake up one day and say, hey, you know, I think I'll do a little of this, a little of that? All right, well, each picture is a progression. Um, when I first started, a lot of pictures, like I said, were from urban, like hip hop influence. I might have went over to jazz, we had, like I spoke with the picture, got with the bass, the guy with the trumpet. Um, so from there, I went from experimenting with a palette knife with more of an abstract feel. Um, and it really was something that happened overnight. I did a, a picture called Universal, where just like you see with the heavy imposter technique, with bright colors, I did a picture and I was really getting ready to paint over it until my wife, she woke up the next morning and said, that looks good. But I, I didn't like it at first. I didn't say that looks good. I said, oh, you did that? I love that Today is my favorite one. It, it, check it out online, Kevin O'Keefe.com. But <laughs> it's, it's my favorite piece. I, I just love it. It's a woman. She has an elongated neck, a big afro. It's just beautiful. She looked happy. That was his first happy piece. Just focus on that. So what happened from there is I, I really listen to my audience. You know, I try to really reflect the art that you all want. So it took me a long time to really see, okay, that's a good technique. I need to develop that technique. And all the pictures that you see is really neat listen to the feedback that you're giving. You know, what if you had a woman like this? Or what if you had a woman like this? What if you use these colors? And I go in the lab and I try to work out exactly what you tell me because I believe people will tell you exactly what they want. You have to listen. And then I think for anybody to really rise to any, any level of greatness is the people that anoint you. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I would like to invite you all to take a five-minute recess, and then we'll meet on the third floor to begin Paul Branton's artist talk. But in closing, this is really why Brownsville is special. It's the fingerprints, it's learning about these artists, feeling the work on a level that's just not superficial. So let's give a round of applause for Kevin O'Keefe. We're going to